Acts chapter 14. And we'll be reading from verse 5 to 10, but I'll just be focusing on 8 to 10. 5 to 10 for us to understand the context. He said, I'm reading from King James Version. He said, and when there was an assault made both on the Gentiles and also on the, of the Jews with their rulers to use them dis, despitefully and to stone them, these were the apostles. They were aware of faith and fled unto Lystra <coughs> and Derby, cities of Lycanon, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. That's verse 7. And there they did what? They preached the gospel. Verse 8. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, important in his faith, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same had Paul speak, who, spake, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. You know, I just gave it a little title as a faith that can be seen. You know, Jesus mentioned. In the Bible, great faith, little faith. But here we are looking at faith can, that can be seen. That can be seen. Faith that can be seen. You know, at this point in time, the Bible recorded that the disciples scattered because there were assaults on them. And they wanted to kill them. And Paul and his colleagues, his associates, the Bible says in verse 6, in verse 7, in verse 6, yeah, in verse 6, they were aware of faith and fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities of Laconia, and unto the region that lie round about. By 7, there they preached the gospel. And as they were preaching the gospel, the Bible says there was a certain man at this room. The Bible says he was important as his faith. Being crippled from the mother's womb, who never had worked. The same heard Paul speak. And Paul, I believe, steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had faith. To be healed. And Paul spoke and called him and said, with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. In this passage, we are seeing, first of all, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of the Lord. You see, faith is something that can be developed as you begin to hear the word of the Lord. And that's what the Lord wants us to do because the gospel is a gospel of faith. Amen. It's by faith that we are saved. Amen. It's by grace that we are saved through faith. Sorry. By grace we are saved through faith. Because it's the grace of God combined with the faith that we have brought salvation that is already available unto us. The grace of God is available. However, that grace can only be activated through faith. And here we are looking at a man that heard the word of the Lord. The Bible said that he was crippled from the mother's womb. But he heard the word that Peter and Paul was preaching. The word of faith. You know, I don't know who you, where you stand today. There could be things that have been crippled in your life. Maybe those things, those crippled things, might not be from your, from your mother's womb. 
It could be things that after a while they've gone bad. After a while something happened. After a while there's a tumbling in your life. After a while something happened. There might be a financial disaster. There might be something like sickness. Whatever it is, the Bible said the man was crippled from the mother's womb. That was, the Bible said it was important. He couldn't work. Are there things in your life that can't do working? But they have potential to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because of one thing or the other, they are unable to work. Because of one thing or the other, you see that the enemy attacked. Or circumstances occurred as a result of your mistake. You know, this brings to me, my mind, the story of Jabez. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says that he was a honorable man. More honorable than his brethren. However, there was something that would happen. The mother said, the Bible said the mother bore him in pain. He came but he was a troubled man to the mother. And because of the pain of the mother, the mother gave him a name, Jabez, a man of sorrow. And all his life he was living out of sorrow. All his life he was a sorrowful man. But he came to a point that he realized that faith can work. And he didn't allow anybody to see his faith. He activated his faith. He asked the Lord that you might bless me indeed. He knew what he wanted. That you might enlarge my coast. That your hand might be with me. And the Bible said that you might deliver him from evil. But the key thing I want to see there is that the last one he said that he might not be a pain to himself. That he might not be the one that will cause the failure of the faith. That his unbelief might not allow him or cause him not to receive the blessing of the Lord. But he asked the Lord for his grace. That grace is that you might bless me indeed. And the Lord, seeing his faith, the Bible said his story changed. Where are you today? I believe God wants to change our stories. He wants to change our story because many of us might say, I am not crippled. I am not important. I can work. It doesn't relate to me. But there are things in your life that might have been crumbling, that is crumbling, or that is about to crumble. Faith, as we are looking at it, we can activate our faith that can cause that thing to come to, uh, to, come to uh, the normality to come to its original nature, to be restored, and even to be made better. Here in this passage, the Bible said, Paul, having seen the faith in that man, and shouted at him, and persisted, shouted at him, and said, stand upright. And the Bible said the man heard the word, because faith was already there. His faith has already been seen. You know, many times, the word we preach today is, is a word that will activate that faith that is already in your life. The grace of God that is already in your life, they will be activated for you to know that you can always do what you think you couldn't do before. I want to look at another passage. Because in this one, I want to look at a few passages and we'll begin to make amend in what God wants to speak to us all about. I want to look at Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Acts 3. Faith that can be seen. Acts chapter 3. Yes, please. Verse 1 to 10. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain length. A certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask aims for those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. 
So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive from something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took up his right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Thank you. Stop, stop. Let's, let's stop at it. You see, we are looking at another story. And this story concerns Peter. The Lord used this to launch Peter and the other disciples into ministry. After having encountered the falling of the anointing, the Pentecost, the falling of the Holy Ghost upon them. And many people having been, con having been, having been converted, empowered to walk in the power of God. And this was the second miracle that we can receive, we can see in the life of Peter after Acts chapter 2. The falling of the anointing, the falling of the Holy Ghost upon them. The Bible says, as they were walking into the temple, they saw a man also that was been crippled from the womb. And the man had always been there begging for arms for more than many years. Up to 40 years or thereabout, isn't it? And the Bible recorded that the man saw Peter and John and was asking for money. But the interesting thing was that Peter said, they said to the man, silver and gold have we not, but what we have we give unto thee. You know, there's something I want you to look, pay attention to. In verse 5, in verse 4, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him, John said, look on us. Look on us. I don't know how long that look on us was for. Mm. He said, look on us. Mm. See the light of God in our eyes. Oh, See the power of God in our eyes. See we are carriers of the anointing. We are carriers of the power of God. Look on us. You will see something different. You will see a change in your life. In that verse, he said, look on us. Verse 5 said, and he gave you the man, gave he unto them, expecting to receive something of them. The man connected to them, but he was still expecting to receive something. But the Bible didn't say he was expecting money any longer. He was seeing the power of God in action. There was an anointing of God. The power of God is changing. Reconnecting. Talking to the man that was crippled. The man was looking. And Peter and John were looking at the man. He said, look at us. Don't move. You know, it reminds me. When Peter, when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water. And Peter said, if it is you, curse me to come. Cause me to walk on the water. And Jesus said, yes, come. His eyes was on, Peter, on, on Jesus. And as his eyes was on Jesus, he was walking. As the eyes of this crippled man were, were on Peter and John, he was looking at them. But Peter, the Bible said, he saw the boisterous storm. He looked and saw the storm and he noticed that his faith has gone. The Bible said, he shouted, Master, save me. Because his eyes left Jesus. And here, the Bible said, Peter and John said, look on us. And verse 5 said, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. What is it that you are after? I believe Looking at this passage, 
The Bible said, as he gave heed unto the expecting to receive something of them. What was he expecting? I believe he was no longer expecting money. He was expecting something greater. Something bigger. Something higher. Something more powerful than money. Silver and gold we don't have. But what we have, we give unto you. He was expecting something. And when Peter and John realized that he had faith to receive what they want to give him. Because they've already told him. They looked at him, look on us. In verse 6. Peter said, Silver and gold have I not, but as I have, but such as I have, I give, such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ <coughs> of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I don't know where your eyes are. The Bible says if your eyes are sink, your whole body will be sink. But if your eyes are double or dark, your body will full of darkness. If you are single and looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, you will see light coming to your own body. You will see the light of God emanating from the throne room of grace. The Bible says that God is light. In him there is no darkness. What we need is light to disperse darkness. The Bible says he lifted. They lifted the man up. And he took him by his hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and the ankle bones received strength. And the man began to leap, to shout, to praise the Lord. You know, if our eyes are on Christ in whatever we are going through, I believe he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which we ask or think. Everything that we are thinking about, everything that we are asking about, God is able to do more than that. This man was thinking about money. He was thinking about silver, something that he will use and he will finish. And God was ready to give him something that will cause him to be a giver of silver. A giver of the things that he was after. He was looking for silver and gold. He was living, looking for coins, bronze, or whatever it might be at that time. Peter says, silver and gold we don't have. But such we have, we give unto you. In the name of Jesus, many of us will rise up from wherever we are. Amen. Even those watching us. You will rise up today. Amen. Because the Bible, in this we see, the two men of God speaking to those men because they saw their faith. How is your faith today? Begin to receive that faith that will cause you to move high. Let's look at another passage before we go into other things. The next person you want to look at is Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. We might not read it. From verse 17 to verse 20. Or let me just read it. Let me rush it. He said, And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. That this is Jesus himself. That there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by. And they were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power. And the power. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which had, which was taken with a pulse. And they sought 
means to bring him in and to lay him before me. 19. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the house top and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. Verse 20. And when what? When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the man, Thy sins are forgiven thee. Jesus saw their faith. These were, these were people that they had a man that was going suffering for Paul's. And Jesus, the man could not see how they could penetrate and move through to enter, to break the barrier that was before them. And they realized they could go through the top. And the Bible said they opened the rooftop. They created an opening and dropped the man in the midst where Jesus was. And the Bible says that Jesus saw their faith. Amen. And he spoke to the man and said, Thy faith, thy sins are forgiven. I don't want us to go into whether it was because the man was sinful that caused the sickness. Because even in John chapter 9 or thereabout, when Jesus healed, people were asking, was it because of the sin? But Jesus said it was for the glory of God to be made manifest. But what we're looking at here is that Jesus saw their faith. And as a result, the Bible said he forgave the man's And I believe he instructed the man not to sin again. Who knows what might be the cause of what we're going through? Could it be as a result of sin? Could it be as a result of disobedience? Could it be as a result of one mistake that allowed the head to be broken for the serpent to bite? The Bible says that affliction does not come from the ground. It does come. That's, affliction comes from somewhere. Yeah. You know, looking at this, we are seeing, although in this passage, the last passage of Jesus, the Bible didn't tell us that the man that was suffering from palsy was from birth. But I believe it could have been something. It might be from birth, but the Bible didn't tell us that. But what the Bible told us that was that the Lord saw their faith and forgave them their sin. And heal the man. Our Jesus, our Lord, our Master is still the healer. Amen. But there's something I want us to look at here. We are seeing faith that could be seen. You know, when we look at Mark, I want somebody to look at that. In Mark, we might not look at it, but it's a, it's, it's a Mark chapter 9. But it's a story of a man that brought a dumb and deaf spirit. A man that had a child that had a deaf and a dumb spirit. And as Jesus came back from the Mount of Transfiguration, the Bible said that the man came to Jesus for the son to be healed. Because he tried with the disciples that were there and nothing happened. I think that was that story. And they were asking, let's look at it. I think we need to look at it. It's something I think we need to do. Mark 23. Mark 9, sorry. Verse 23. 
Jesus, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Praise the Lord. There was no faith from the disciples to bring about this thing. And the man came to Jesus. And Jesus was rebuking the people, calling them faithless generation in 19. How long will I bear with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring unto me. And they brought unto the man. In verse 21, Jesus asked the man, How long has it ago this came unto him? And the, 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 man, the father said, Of a child. In verse 20, Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. You know, I want you to look at that. You know, Jesus said to the man, If he can believe that all things are possible to them that believe. He didn't say that all things are possible with God. So that means there's a realm that we can come to, a realm of belief. Oh. And we see that we are operating in the power and the grace of God. The Bible said, if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Hallelujah. And that belief is if you have faith. If you come to a place of seeing God in your life, oh. if you come to a place of knowing that God is able, the Bible says, for without faith, it is impossible to do what? Please. To please Him. For anyone that comes to God must first believe that He is a rewarder oh, of them that seek Him. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, we are looking at this passage that Jesus told him and said, if you can believe, what is it that you are going through and you want a change? The Bible said, if we can believe that all things are possible to them that believe. All things are possible to them that believe. All things are possible to them that believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. If you can believe, what is it that you need a belief in? What is it that you need faith in? What is it that you desire to happen in your life? Jesus himself is saying that all things are possible to you if you believe. I want you to activate your faith. I want you to come to a place where you know that you can do it. Because Jesus said that all things are possible. And that's why they were asking Jesus. In the book of Luke 17, verse 5, they were asking to increase their faith. And Jesus said, you don't need increase of your faith. You need to activate your faith. You need to act your faith. Even if the faith is like a mustard seed, you could use that faith to move the mountain and command the mountain to be driven into the sea. So it's not about increase. It's about you believing and acting. Jesus here said, all things are possible. If you can believe, if you believe, that all things are possible. Let's look at Mark 10. 27. Let's compare these two scriptures. Mark 10, 27. Yes, please. But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. You see, here, they're looking at someone that can enter eternal life. Someone that can partake, someone can, that can achieve what only God can do. 
And Jesus said, without the God factor in it, it is impossible for man. Because it's only with God factor that all things are possible. Amen. 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 It's only with you trusting God, believing in God, that it is possible. And many of us don't misunderstand this scripture. God said, with him all things are possible. And as you begin to walk in that divine nature, in that faith that God has given us, that we might be partaker of his divine nature. If we begin to operate in the faith that God has exercised and given us, the Bible says, have faith. Verse 27. Matt 10, 27. And Jesus looking upon them said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. The Bible says that the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God, it's past finding. Oh, she Bible tells us that God created us and put eternity in our heart. Hey. That we cannot understand what he has made. He said, for with God, all things are possible. Everything is possible with God. Humanly speaking, it is impossible for men, but not with God. I want to, I want to build on something. You see, we are looking at faith that can be seen. And the question is, how can your faith be seen? Is it for me to see? Is it for another person to see? Is your faith? Are you acting in your faith for God to see? Because we saw the men that saw the faith. They didn't see the faith in their own person. They saw it in the glory. They saw the faith in their anointing. In that of Acts chapter 14, the Bible said, Paul perceived there was a gift that was operating there. He was operating in the gift of the discernment of the spirit. He was operating in that gift to discern, to perceive that he had faith. And as he was operating in that, he operated in the gift of working of miracles. Having seen that faith was in action, because faith is something you build upon others. In the book of 2 Peter 1 verse 5. The Bible says. Adding your faith to these promises. Is the faith that you add. You, you have, faith is the baseline to which you add other things. Let's look at that 2 Peter 1 5. You add virtue of goodness and some others. Second Peter 1 5. Can someone help me? But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, oh. to virtue knowledge. knowledge. And to knowledge yeah. and to knowledge self-control. To self-control just five. So about five. Praise the Lord. You see, faith is the it, 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 it is the baseline to add other things. To. Because we are justified by faith. We walk by faith. We live by faith. Everything we do, we are saved by faith. Everything we do is by faith. To come to God, you have to come to Him by faith. And that's why there he says, add 
looking at the promises of God, add to your faith, goodness, or virtue. Add to that goodness, knowledge, self-control. Begin to abuse on your faith. Because your faith can only grow as you exercise it. As you continue to hear the word and begin to exercise it. And I want to add something. Since we are in Peter, in 1 Peter 1 verse 5, it tells us something about faith. If someone has it, it's, there's something I want us to see about faith. 1 Peter 1 5. It's, it's 5 5. 1 Peter 1 verse 5. Yes, please. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for, for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Praise the Lord. You know, whatever you are going through, the only power that keeps you is the faith that you have that God is there. So we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation until the time, until the time of our salvation. It's the faith that we have that the power of God is acting, is available, that keeps us. That, maybe I didn't explain it well, but let me look at Hebrews 11.27. Let's see what Moses did. Hebrews 11, 27. Oh. Verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, but he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Praise the Lord. You see, I was looking at this scripture and I saw that there are things that will cause you to be fearless oh, in your life. It's the faith that God is working with you. Yes, It's the faith of knowing that the almighty God, the invisible one, is working with you. The Bible says, by faith, that Moses forsook Egypt and all that he has to offer. The Bible says he never feared the wrath, the wrath of the king. He wasn't afraid that the king was after him. He wasn't afraid afraid that the king can send and get him from media. But the Bible said he recognized the invisibility but the, 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 the power of that invisible God going with him. You know when you are going with an invisible God you become invisible to others. When you are walking with invisible God, you become invisible to people around you. And you will know that around you, no one can see you because you become untouchable. Touch not. Like Laban that was going to destroy Jacob to take back his children and take back all that Jacob had and send Jacob home empty. And the Lord warned him, mind you, Make sure you say nothing good or bad to that person. Just be aware that you become neutral. Because if you say anything good or you say anything bad, you are in trouble. Just go. Look at them and come back. Touch not. Say so by faith, Moses forsook Egypt. Not fearing. The wrath of the king. Because he believed. He saw the invisible God. The presence of the Lord going with him. You know the shield of faith. Is what it helps us. To push back. The assignments. We we'll look at this and I'll round up. Ephesians 6, verse 16. Ephesians 6, verse 16. 
Ephesians 6, verse 16. Ephesians 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Praise him. The Bible says, above all, take the shield, the protection of faith. Because that shield is protection. He said, take off the shield of faith, the protection of faith, that you might be able to quench. That means to destroy. To turn back all the fiery darts of the enemy. And I want us to understand That our faith can be seen. Oh, Not necessarily Jesus. with the human eye. It can be seen by God. God knows when you are in faith to receive what you are looking for. And God knows that sometimes you need to act that faith. And that's why Jesus said, even if you have a little, begin to act that faith. Oh, Jesus. Begin to move it. Begin to command the mountain to move and be thrown into the sea. Somebody might ask today, what is it? I'm looking at a place I want to go. The last scripture I want to use to close. Ephesians 2 verse 10. Please. The Bible says, For by grace you are saved through faith. And that's not of yourself. It is the gift of God. You know, there are many of us today. Whatever it is that you are looking up to God to save you from. Oh, Jesus. It's by the grace of God. Paul was a man that cried unto, unto the Lord Jesus. He said, three times I saw the Lord that the Lord might remove the thorn of the flesh that was upon him. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. And my power is made perfect in your weakness. And Paul was saying then that he was rejoicing in his infirmity that the grace of God might be sufficient. I want you to know today if you have not received Jesus Christ, the Bible says it's by grace we are saved through faith. It's not of our own selves, it's the gift of God. If you want to receive the grace today, Jesus is supplying the grace to save. First of all, you, if you don't know Jesus, you have to come to a place of knowing him because you cannot receive many a times things from your enemy. For someone that you have not acknowledged that he is your Lord and Savior, you want to change the kind. You want to come to the camp of Jesus. The Bible said that he that knew no sin became sin. That you yourself might die to sin and become righteous in God's eyes. Jesus is calling you. If you are backslidden, you knew him before you backslidden. Or you've not made any attempt to follow Jesus. Now is the time. Repeat after me. And for those here, for those outside, if you want to pray this prayer, before we pray the prayers of, the, of, of healing, say, follow, uh, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. I repent of them. And I ask you that you place me with the blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary. Today, 
I acknowledge and I declare that I'm a child of God. I am born again of your word, of your spirit. In Jesus' name. Father God, for those that have prayed this prayer, I ask, oh Lord, that you fill them with your spirit. That you keep them by the power that's in the name of Jesus until eternity we meet once again. In Jesus' name. For those that want to act their faith, for those that might be something that has been wrong with you, from your mother's womb, there are things you need in your life to be changed. The Bible says that God changes not, but he changes all things. Change is something that's inevitable, but God doesn't change. As we saw today, there were two, there were two people that we recorded that were crippled from their womb, from their mother's womb. And the Bible said that their faith were saved and they were restored. And there was another one, probably he was in sin. His faith also was saved and their sins were forgiven and they were rest he was restored. And God, Jesus here told us that if we believe, that all things are possible. Is there anything that you want to change in your life? Oh, Jesus said, if you can believe that all things are possible. Oh, are there things that you, are, you think before they were not possible? The only ingredient is a belief system. The Bible says, Adam. If you look at the promises in 1, in 1 Peter three and four. He said, adding all those things. And sorry, two Peter one, two Peter three and four. He add all those promises, you add faith. Because those promises are available, but you need faith to activate them. If there's anyone here that wants us to agree, that want me to agree with that person, that there will be a power, a manifestation of God's power a manifestation of God's healing. A manifestation of the deliverance of God in their lives. The Spirit of the Lord is here. God is here to bring about deliverance. And there are people that want their faith to be seen in action. Even out, even out there. If there's anyone, if that person could stand up. For those that say, stand up wherever you are. Lord Jesus. Even as the sun says, that you are the one that supplies the fire. Father Lord, I yield, I yield myself as a vessel. And I ask, Lord, that you supply the fire. You supply the oil that the fire. Father, for those that are standing, you know the things that have crumbled, the things that are crippled in their lives. You, need to, you know those things that need to be restored. Oh, shente riba koromosia kasakati. Let's begin to pray in the spirit. Oh, Rikata Karabakoro Bosia Kandarabakuya. Lord, supply the fire. Lord Jesus, you are the one that baptizes. Lord, let your fire. 